Today we will uncover the tragic fate of a highly skilled mountaineer who met a terrible end, Jerzy Kukuczka. Poland's respected master of the mountains was a true force in the world of alpine climbing. With a bold spirit and desire to conquer new heights, he left an indelible mark on the history of mountaineering. Born in Karowice, Poland, in 1948, Kukuczka's journey to greatness began at the young age of 17 when he first experienced the thrill of rock climbing. Little did he know that this initial venture would set him on a path that would shape his entire life. What led to the tragic demise of this accomplished mountaineer? Let's find out. Kukuczka became really good at climbing and got famous. He loved climbing so much that he went to really high mountains and did dangerous trips. In 1966, he joined a famous mountaineering club and that's when his career really took off. He kept climbing and amazed everyone with his bravery. But in 1989, Kukuczka faced his biggest challenge ever, the south side of Lhotse, that no one had climbed before. He was hanging on a rope with only 250 meters left to reach the top. It was a really intense moment as he defied gravity and pushed himself to the limit. This is the story of his bravery, determination, and never giving up. Yeja was a young climber who found his passion in the Karaviza Mountaineering Club. He made friends with other climbers there and they became his trusted partners on dangerous mountains. But it was in the Tatras Mountains that Yeja discovered his true style of climbing, which made him famous worldwide. Yeja's style of climbing was different from others. He didn't like using heavy gear or staying on the mountain for a long time. Instead, he believed in going fast. He would climb up and down quickly, matching the rhythm of his own heartbeat. His body was his greatest strength, and he pushed himself to the limit, defying gravity and showing incredible endurance. In the early years, he didn't have much money. He really wanted to explore places outside of Poland, so he did different jobs to get the money he needed. He used his skills and resourcefulness to find ways to make money, like doing physical work and sometimes shady businesses. Jerzy did everything he could to satisfy his strong desire to climb mountains. As Jerzy got better at climbing, people could see that he was really good at it. Each year, he conquered harder and harder routes on the big Tatras mountains and left his mark on the tall peaks. The mountains were like his school, his playground, and his canvas, where he could show his ambitious dreams. Jerzy went to trade school and spent a lot of time practicing. He became an expert at climbing mountains. His passion pushed him to always try to be better, and you could see that in every careful move he made. As he went through dangerous places and reached really high points, Jerzy became well known and people saw him as someone who was brave and liked to take risks. In the years 1971 and 1972, Jerzy did some really amazing things that made him famous among climbers in Poland. He went on daring adventures and conquered really tough routes in the mountains. These were the things that made people remember him. Although we won't talk about everything he did before climbing the highest mountains, it's important to know about his incredible accomplishments during this time. Jerzy climbed really tall mountains in Italy and reached the top of Mount Blaine four times. This shows how much he loved challenges. He even went to Alaska and stood on top of Mount Denali, which was a huge achievement. And let's not forget about his honeymoon, where he climbed a new path on the impressive Jurassic Mountains. It was a special climb for him and his partner, showing how much he loved adventure loved being with his partner. Throughout his career, it became clear that Yeja really liked cold places, and he became really good at climbing in the winter. He was so good that he was invited to join a special group called the Ice Warriors. They were a group of Polish climbers who were the best in their country. They focused on climbing the most dangerous peaks during the winter months. But Yeja wanted more. He loved the excitement of exploring new paths. The idea of conquering unexplored territory made him really excited and it's no surprise that he quickly became one of the best climbers in the world. Jerzy was an extraordinary climber who always pushed the boundaries and explored new paths. He was a true trailblazer, going where others were afraid to go. His determination and ability to overcome challenges made him highly respected in the climbing world. Unlike many climbers, Jerzy didn't settle for the usual routes. He constantly searched for new paths and ventured into unexplored territories. This became even more evident as he aimed to conquer the world's tallest mountains, all 14 of them. From 1979 to 1988, Jerzy embarked on an incredible journey, dedicating himself to climbing the highest peaks on Earth. He traveled to different countries, raising funds and gathering resources for his expeditions. Despite facing financial difficulties, he showed great resourcefulness by making his own climbing gear, which is a topic that sparks lively discussions among climbers. 
Over the next decade, Jerry's progress was unstoppable. He faced challenging terrain and extreme weather conditions, but his determination never wavered. He spent months pushing himself to the limit, both physically and mentally. And in a remarkable achievement, he conquered all of the 8,000ers in under seven years, settling the world record for the fastest time to submit all the magnificent peaks. It was an extraordinary feat that amazed the world. Until 2014, Yeja held the record for the fastest time to climb all the world's tallest mountains. But what made him truly special is not just what he did, but how he did it. Yeja's legacy is not only reaching the summits, but also creating new paths on 10 out of the 14 tallest mountains, an unbeatable record that will forever be remembered in climbing history. Adding to his incredible achievements, Yeja conquered four of these mountains in the winter, defying all odds and pushing human limits. He became the first person to reach the tops of Dalagiri, Kanchenjunga, and Annapurna 1 in the winter. These were huge successes that showcased Yeja's unwavering determination to overcome nature's toughest challenges, establishing him as a true pioneer. But the pinnacle of Yeja's climbing career came when he climbed the unexplored south face of K2, a mountain known for its extreme danger. Together with his climbing partner Tarush Piotrowski, Jerry achieved the unimaginable in 1986 by creating a new path on the treacherous face. The south face is extremely difficult and has discouraged all subsequent attempts. No one has ever dared to take on this perilous challenge again. Yeja himself described it as the toughest climb of his entire career, solidifying his place among the greatest mountaineers ever. Yeja's incredible achievements were not without tragedy. During the 1986 K2 season, while attempting the groundbreaking climb of the unexplored south face, Yeja experienced a devastating loss. His partner, Piotrowski, tragically fell to his death during the descent after losing his crampons. The whole season was marked by a high number of fatalities, with a total of 13 climbers losing their lives. Despite the somber atmosphere, Yeja's remarkable accomplishment eventually gained recognition for its magnitude, and he was rightfully acknowledged for his extraordinary feat. There is no denying the greatness of Yeja's achievements. He is rightfully recognized as one of the greatest climbers ever. From conquering the 14 highest mountains on Earth, to facing the freezing cold of winter climbs and creating new paths in harsh and unwelcoming places, Yeja's legacy proves his unbeatable determination and incredible spirit. However, even a skilled climber like Yeja couldn't escape the dangers that exist at high altitudes. After accomplishing what nobody had done before, reaching the summits of the tallest mountains, Yeja could have been satisfied with his remarkable success, but his thirst for new challenges led him back to the first mountain he conquered in 1979, Lhotse. This time, though, Yeja didn't want to take the usual path on the west face. No, for someone like him, the ordinary route wasn't enough. With unwavering determination, he aimed for the toughest and most demanding part of the mountain, ready to test his abilities once again. Yeja's audacity knew no limits, his endless desire for exploration and pushing boundaries drove him to greater heights. He was a true pioneer, always looking to surpass his own accomplishments and explore new frontiers in mountaineering. Even with all his achievements, Yeja never stopped seeking new challenges to overcome. The south face of Lhotse is an enormous challenge, a towering vertical wall that casts a shadow over the path to Everest Base Camp. Many climbers at the time considered it one of the most difficult walls in the world almost impossible to conquer. Yet, it was precisely this seemingly insurmountable nature that attracted Yeja to face it head-on. While some believed it represented the ultimate challenge in the Himalayas during that era, it's important to understand the scale of this endeavor. Imagine a gigantic vertical rock wall covered in ice, reaching a staggering height of 3,300 meters. This wall is called the South Face of Lhotse, and it's one of the most difficult challenges for climbers. It overlooks the Everest Base Camp, and even experienced climbers find it intimidating. Every move on this wall carries huge risks, and even a small mistake can have serious consequences. When bad weather hits, being on this wall becomes extremely dangerous as there's no room for errors. To take on this daring adventure, Yeja worked hard and saved money for several months in Poland. He carefully gathered the funds he needed for his attempt. His climbing partner, Razard Pulaski, joined him on this tough journey as they planned for an alpine-style ascent. They traveled to Kathmandu, a lively city, during the summer of 1989 to get additional climbing gear. The markets there were filled with supplies for mountaineers. However, they discovered something worrying amidst the bustling trade. Many of the items were secondhand. 
For climbers like Yeja, whose lives depended on the reliability of their gear, the thought of using faulty ropes or crampons was a dangerous realization that could lead to disastrous consequences. With their carefully chosen gear, Yeja and Pulaski began their trek towards Everest's base camp, nestled below the towering south wall of Lhotse. But their journey was not easy, as bad weather constantly threatened their hopes of attempting the climb. They knew that taking advantage of the right opportunity was crucial, so they patiently waited. Days turned into weeks, and still they waited, never losing their determination to embark on that ascent. Then, after waiting for what felt like an eternity, the weather finally started to improve. In October, Yeja and Pulaski saw their chance to begin their expedition. On October 23rd, they began off on their long-awaited journey. As they climbed, their exceptional climbing skills amazed those watching from below. It was a privilege to witness these incredible climbers demonstrate their talent with such elegance. The first day of their climb went smoothly, and they set up a bivouac around 8,200 meters, just 300 meters away from the summit. The next morning, like many climbers before them, Yeja and Pulaski woke up early, preparing themselves before the sun even rose. Climbing is a race against time, and starting early gives climbers enough time to reach the summit and safely come back down. This climb was no different. Yeja took the lead as they embarked on the final push, aiming for a challenging smooth rock surface that provided no support from below. It was a risky path where a single mistake could send them tumbling down over 2,000 meters. But as they progressed, they quickly realized that they were facing a tough challenge. In a heart-stopping turn of events, Yeja and Pulaski encountered a major problem when their main rope got stuck and couldn't be freed from below. This rope was their lifeline, the very thing that had guided them so far, and now it was useless for the treacherous climb ahead. In a desperate move, Yeja took out a spare rope he had bought in Kathmandu's busy markets. It was a makeshift solution to an enormous challenge, as they were about to confront the most difficult part of the mountain. As they started their climb, holding on to the unforgiving rock, everyone could feel the tension in the air. It was a crucial moment that could make or break their journey. Sadly, in a split second, Yeja slipped and began a terrifying fall down the mountainside. He desperately held on to the transport rope, hoping it would save him. But with a terrible snap, the rope broke under the strain, and Yeja tragically lost his life. Pulaski, stunned and shaken, could only sit in shock, trying to process the unimaginable loss he had just witnessed. The reality hit him hard, and he felt a mix of grief and fear. Pulaski was not as experienced or strong a climber as Yeja. Now he found himself alone on that dangerous, unknown rock face. But with all his skills and experience, Pulaski managed to navigate the treacherous terrain and reach the safety of the camp that night. The news of Yeja's tragic fate spread through the climbing community, and they mourned the loss of an extraordinary climber, more importantly, an exceptional person. Yeja left behind a wife and two children. One of his children would later follow in his footsteps and conquer Mount Everest. This heartbreaking loss reminds us that even the greatest climbers can't escape the unpredictable forces of nature. Yeja's passing poses a profound challenge for everyone, and it's very heartbreaking to see that such an experienced climber could meet such a fate. But we were not on that deadly mountain, so we can't judge. What we hope this story teaches us is the preciousness of life and the remarkable greatness that Yeja represented as a climber. May his legacy live on, reminding us of the risks and the incredible beauty that define the world of mountaineering.